there, welcome to the book nook. Today we're gonna talk about my uh, serious addiction to the library. I go quite often and sometimes I get way too many books. Sometimes I'm able to finish them and sometimes I'm not. Let's get into my library book haul. When you feel the need to read. So I got a couple new books that I've been wanting to check out. The first one is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. This is about the daughter of Dr. Moreau, who is either madman or genius, and he uh, has some interesting experiments that uh, might not be so good, or maybe they're genius. I don't know. And this is brought to us from the author of Mexican Gothic, which I haven't read, but I've heard it's amazing. So I probably need to get on that and read that too. But let me give you a little bit of taste. We'll have story time with Sin. We're probably gonna have a little bit of that because we got some books to look at today. Carlota Moreau. On a side note, the name Carlota, when I was in Spanish in high school, that was my Spanish name. A young woman growing up on a remote and luxuriant estate. Safe from the conflict and strife of the Yucatan Peninsula. The only daughter of a researcher who is either a genius or a madman, as I have said. Montgomery Lawton, a melancholic overseer with a tragic past and a propensity for the booze. An outcast who assists Dr. Moreau with his experiments, which are financed by the Lizaldis, the owners of the magnificent haciendas and plentiful coffers. Then the next character in this list is called the hybrids. The fruits of the doctor's labor, destined to blindly obey their creator and remain in the shadows. A motley group of part human, part animal monstrosities. So, I mean, what could go wrong? Right? Am I right? What could go wrong? So, yeah, the daughter of Dr. Moreau. I can't wait to read this. Actually, this is probably next up after I finish Brandon Sanderson's book that has his uh, magical tendrils currently in me. Next up after that, we have The Night Shift by Natalka Burian. And this was a random one I picked up. I read the synopsis and I thought it sounded pretty cool. Uh, it seems like there's like some elements of, I don't know if it's teleportation, but let's, let's give you the synopsis to get a better look into The Night Shift. So hidden behind back doors of bars and restaurants and theaters and shops all over New York City are shortcuts, secret passageways that allow you to jump through time and space to merge into different parts of the city. That sounds pretty cool. No one knows where they came from, but there are rules and you can only travel through them one way and only at night. Well, I wonder why. When Jean's work friend, Iggy, introduces her to the shortcuts, it helps to shorten her commute between her night shifts bartending and her work at an upscale bakery. Jean is intrigued, but has a hard time shaking the side effects. The shortcuts make her more talkative, more open to discussing her past and recalling memories she's tried hard to forget. When Iggy goes missing, Jean believes it's somehow related to the shortcuts. His growing obsession with them but as she starts digging into their origins, comes to find a strange connection between herself and the shortcuts. I thought that sounded pretty cool. And then I've been wanting to read this one for a while. It's a horror book. I got Paul Tremblay's The Cabin at the End of the World and and because I like to read books that I know are going to be made into movies. This is going to be made into a movie. I believe it comes out in February of next year. It's got a cool premise. Sounds really creepy and weird and wondrous. Seven-year-old Wen and her parents, Eric and Andrew, are vacationing at a remote cabin on a quiet lake in northern New Hampshire. A handful of miles from the Canadian border, far removed from the bustle of the city life, cut off from the urgent hum of cell phones, the internet, and they are more than two miles away from their closest neighbors in either direction. On a cloudless summer day, when catches grasshoppers in the front yard, a stranger unexpectedly appears. See, this is never good. When a stranger appears? Mm, well, I mean, what could go wrong, right? Okay. So a stranger appears. Leonard is the largest man Wen has ever seen. But he is young, 24 and a half years old, and friendly, with a warm and wide smile that wins her over almost immediately. Leonard and Wen continue to talk and play until three more strangers, two women and a man, Man, all dressed like Leonard in jeans and button-down shirts, come down the road carrying strange menacing objects. What do you think they had? What do you think the objects are? 
In a panic, Wen tells Leonard that she must go back inside the cabin. But before she goes, her new friend tells her, None of what's going to happen to you is your fault. You haven't done anything wrong. But the three of you will have to make some tough decisions. I wish with all my broken heart you didn't have to. As Wen sprints away to warn her parents, Leonard calls out, Your dads won't want to let us in, Wen. But they have to. We need your help to save the world. Please. Well, that's not creepy at all. <laughs> so yeah, Kevin at the end of the world, Paul Tremblay. Heck yeah. All right, next up, I don't know anything about this book, but I know I keep seeing it everywhere. I see it on Instagram and I see it on Twitter and I see it in bookstores. Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. I like stuff that have a magical edge. So this has a story, and it was nearly a decade ago. Iconic magician Violet Volk performed her greatest trick yet, vanishing mid-act. Though she hasn't been seen since. Her hold on the public hasn't wavered. While well, Violet sought out the spotlight, her sister, Sasha, ever the responsible one, took over their mother's salon and built a quiet life for her daughter, Quinn. But Sasha can never seem to escape her sister's orbit or her memories of their unresolved, tumultuous relationship. Then there's Cam and Frank, determined to finally get his big break hosting a podcast devoted to all things Violet. Though keeping his job hinges on an exclusive interview with Sasha, the last person who wants to talk to him. As the 10th anniversary of Violet's final performance approaches, the podcast picks up steam and Cameron's pursuit of Sasha becomes increasingly intrusive. Get out of there, Cameron Frank. He isn't the only one wondering what secret she might be harboring. So Quinn, loyal to the aunt she always idolized, is doing her own investigating. Meanwhile, Sasha begins to experience an unsettling series of sleepwalking episodes and coincidences, which all lead back to, can you guess who? No? Violet! I mean, you probably guessed that. <laughs> Pushed to her emotional limits, Sasha must finally confront the most painful truths about her sister and herself, even at the risk of losing everything. Acts of Violet. I mean, that's why I got all these. They all sound good to me. Why would I get one and I'd be like, ah, that sounds terrible. I want to read that. It sounds horrible and like I won't enjoy it at all. It has to intrigue me for me to read it. The next one I got, The Mermaid of black conch or conch i think it's i think you say it conch conch that sounds funny to me conch the mermaid of black conch and that is by monique Rafi. and i like as i said i like stories that have like an underwater element and so this siren of the sea called to me oh it's also the winner of the costa book of the year award it has accolades in 1976 david is fishing off the island of black conch when he comes upon a creature he does not expect. A mermaid by the name of Ikea. Ikea? Once a beautiful young woman, she was cursed by jealous wives to live in this form for the rest of her days. But after the mermaid is caught by the American tourists, David rescues and hides her away in his home, finding that once out of the water, she begins to transform back into a woman. Now David must work to win Akaya's trust while she relearns what it is to be human, navigating not only with her new body, but her relationship with others on the island. A difficult task after centuries of loneliness. As David and Akaya grow to love each other, they juggle both the joys and the dangers of life on shore. But a lingering question remains. Will the former mermaid be able to escape her curse? Taking on many points of view, this mythical adventure tells the story of one woman's return to land, her healing, and her survival. So the mermaid of black conch. That one is gonna make a splash too. But um, so I think I got a really great variety of all these books. We got some horror, we got some underwater vibes going on, but you know, she's gonna come out to land, so that's cool too. And then a story about a magician, and then we got the daughter of Dr. Moreau, and that just sounds weird and wondrous. So that <laughs> should be fun. If you are interested in any of these books, I will have links down below. They are affiliate links, so a little bit goes to me, and then also goes to indie bookstores. If you had fun hanging out, boop that like button, come back, see me again, and we'll talk about more bookish things and weird stuff.